Here's how you can make an easy Easter bunny. It's so simple but so cute too, with the cute little ears, little cotton tail, and you can even make a loop to hang him on your Easter tree. You'll need some sort of felting base. I'm using a wool base here, but you can use a simple foam one like this. You'll also need some wool. I'm using a carded sliver. This one was actually called rabbits and I've got three long pieces. Then you'll need some white for the cheek pads, some baby pink for the nose and inside the ears, a tiny, tiny bit of black for the eyes. You'll also need some normal wool for the loop to hang, though it's optional. Also scissors and I use 36 and 38 gauge triangle needles. The holders are also optional. So let's get started. Take one of the lengths of the carded slivers and from one end, you're going to start to roll. You're aiming for an oval shape and tucking the ends in as you go, do it as tight as you can. The tighter you go, the less felting you'll have to do. Keep going, tucking the ends in, keeping them nice and curved and then go all the way to the end of your piece. This is gonna form the body of your bunny. Now take your 36 gauge triangle and stab deeply into the shape. Hold it with your other hand to keep it in place so it doesn't unravel. You may want to use finger protectors if this is your first time having a go so you don't stab your fingers. Turn it as you go try to keep a rounded end and you're basically stabbing into the wool the barbs on the needle will compact the wool as you go it'll get firmer and smaller i'm speeding up a bit because this does take quite a while you want to keep checking the wool to make sure that it is becoming firm and that you're keeping to the right shape you want it to be an oval 3D shape and at the moment it's fairly loose. Rolling it in warm hands will also help iron out any bumps or lumps. It's up to you how soft you want it but I tend to go pretty firm because it will last longer and won't fall to pieces. You can see there's still lots of bumpy areas so I'm just going to carry on going over those. If you have a multi-needle tool it can speed up the process further so you can put up to three needles in this clover one and I just generally use two. To make the bunny body a little bit bigger I'm halving one of the lengths and then laying it long ways wrapping the wool over the top really tightly like so and then I'm going to take the other half and then wrap it the other way round so it's going round the length and the width. Do it tightly and then go over and stab again. Always hold the piece that you're felting down onto the felting base and stab down but away from your fingers. Try to remember to take breaks maybe every half an hour to stop any repetitive strain injury or muscle fatigue. Yes, this is firming up really nice and well. I hope you're getting on well so far. You'll notice the wool's a little bit holy and a little bit bumpy still. We're going to move now to a higher gauge needle. So we're moving to the 38 gauge triangle. This time we're going to be going over the surface a little bit less deep. Try to go at more of a shallow angle. You're going to be smoothing out the surface further and further. Roll in your warm hands, but also go over with your thumb and fingertips to make it smoother. The tail end we're going to make flatter, so push with your finger and then also stab with your needle to make flat base. It should be nice and flat and it should stand up nicely. The exciting part next is to make the bunny ears. You'll need half of one of the lengths and split in half again. Fold in half. This is where the ears will go. So it's two like this. Let's start off with then with one ear, but whatever you do with one, you need to do on the other. So just remember that. So lay it down flat and using one needle or two needles or even three, you can just go over the length of it, leaving one end tufty. That's the end that's going to attach to your bunny. 
I'm just going over the surface like so and then turning over frequently. Go over again and what you want is to aim for a thicker wider end at the top where the fold was and a nice tufty end to attach but then you want to bring the sides in and bring all the loose fibers in make it a nice smooth edge so kind of go at a bit of an angle do as much as you can turning over as you go and then to get the real kind of um, finish you'll need to swap to the one needle again keep going over so it's nice and smooth you can use your fingers to manipulate it bring the sides in I think that's looking pretty good, nice and smooth. But you might want to carry on until you're really happy with the shape of it. Try to get smooth edges. You don't want it fraying at the edges. So when you've done the one ear, you need to do the second ear. And you can compare the two as you go. I can see the one on my right is a little bit wide and not very smooth yet. So I'm just comparing. I'm going to bring one side in a little bit more. And then they should match really well. Always be careful of your fingers when you're doing smaller pieces like this. Let's now add a splash of pink to the inner side of the ear. Keep a blob of pink for the nose. We're going to try not to go through to the other side. Um, so we're going to lay it down onto the inner ear. Very carefully, shallow felt with your needle. This is the 38 gauge again. Adding it without making go through the other side is really important when you do ears doesn't matter too much of a tiny bit goes through you can always kind of snip it off but um, if you can try to keep it just to the one side then it's better give lots of little stabs all over the area I'm just teasing it out a bit to make sure it's a rounded shape you want it to stay on and not fall off that's the main thing and yeah not too bad the other side now do the other ear so here are the two bunny ears, how cute are those? They're gonna go on the top, so spread out the fluffy bits. And if there's too much, you can actually pull a little bit off. There's a bit too much on this right one, I think, so I'm gonna put a tiny bit off. But this will just enable the, the loose bits to go over or into the, the bunny's body. I'm gonna position them there. You could use pins to secure them in place but I'm just going to go a bit freestyle. So this is a basic lesson on attachment. This is how you attach parts. Always have some loose fluff. You're using your needle to stab the loose fibres into the body. You can give it a little tug to make sure that it's really securely attached. Carry on stabbing to smooth the surface. And there we go. This is how it looks. Now it's all firm and attached really well. Prepare your eyes, nose and cheeks. I'm rolling up tiny bits of black, little dots. There you go. Two the same for the eyes. And for the nose, doing a kind of the same thing, but with a, a larger pink blob. Forming the basic shape that I want in my warm fingers, like so. And then I'm having two bigger blobs for the cheek pads in the white. You can do this as you go, but I like to prepare it so I can see the shapes before they go onto the body. So I'm gonna position the eyes about parallel with where the pink is. They're about a centimeter from where the ear is. And you can put them as close together Make them as big as you like it's completely up to you what you want to do with your bunny and i'm poking the eye not to flatten them but kind of going from the outside around the outline poking the outline down so i'm not flattening the middle too much try to make it as round as you can don't have to be perfect all the bunnies look different when i've done this at a class before Everyone's bunnies look just so amazing and unique. I love it. So for the nose, doing the same thing, keeping it really kind of bulbous and going in from the edges rather than flattening it so it's a nice 3D little nose. <laughs> I'm 
look at different angles because it will help to see whether it's uniform or not. And then the cheek pads, make these as big as you like, as small as you like. I've kind of gone for quite fairly big just because I like them this kind of size. And again, whatever you do with one thing, you have to do exactly the same on the other side. So there we go. There's a little funny face. Turn it upside down just to double check everything's symmetrical. You can also look in the mirror. That helps sometimes as well to see whether there's any mistakes. Yay, we're almost there. He's so cute. <laughs> For the feet, you'll need more of your carded wool getting equal size pieces but just measure first folding in half a bit like you did with the bunny ears to see how big you want your feet to be I'm going to take a little bit off you want to have the same pile size for each foot so that it's equal I'm going with about that kind of size so fold in half but we're not going to have a tufty end this time you're going to do a heel end is going to be folded as well so fold the other end as well Stab over the top like you did with the ears. Do the same with the second foot, folding it one end and then the other and going over the surface. And then stab inwards from the side make your edges nice and smooth fold it over if you need to the heel end is going to be slightly narrower and the toe end slightly wider switch to your one needle when you want to get a bit more firming up and a bit more precise on your edges you don't want any loose fibres and fraying edges. You want to keep it nice and smooth, rounded edges. This is looking great. I think that's just the right size. It's looking good. What I want to do, though, is I want to make the toe end a little bit wider and thicker. So I'm going to just take a little bit more of the wool and I'm going to wrap it around the toe end like this there you go and then just do the same stabbing over until that's nice and secure and rounded at the edge do the same with the other foot and just keep matching them and making sure that they look the same there we go two little feet how cute you could put detail on them if you want to but i'm just going to keep them very simple and then put a little blob of wool like loose fibers this is for attachment so you're putting part of it into the foot and the other part is going to go into the bottom of the body so heels positioned use your 36 gauge triangle to stab from the bottom of the heel through into the body so the loose fibers attach it really firmly you'll need to position it stab it and then before it's fully firm you can try the other one to make sure it's in the correct place and then once you're happy with the position you can then really firm up and smooth up all of the surface as well make sure that the feet can't easily pull off looking good and your bunny should sit now on its feet or stand on its feet <laughs> the bunny can't be a bunny without that gorgeous fluffy tail so I'm pulling the fibers making it all fluffy getting it in a big blob and quite literally just popping it on its back end <laughs> and stabbing around randomly I want it to just look really fluffy bunny tail Pop a little cotton bunny tail. Make sure it's firmly secure, but it should look really cute and fluffy from the back. There we go. You can give a little trim to any fuzzy, fluffy, loose fibres if you need to. 
and there's the bunny you can have ears up or down so cute i hope you love yours too if you have time you could make a few of these for your friends and family for easter your bun is great as it is but you could also make a loop to hang take some ordinary wool that's used for knitting place the ends on the top of your bunny and simply stab those loose fibers into the bunny's head secure it firmly so it'll hang nicely on your easter tree i hope you've enjoyed making this simple bunny if you'd like a challenge for a more realistic bunny watch this video next